After spending thousands of hours filling in the collection log on my main account, I wanted to take on that journey from a different perspective. That's why I made this guy, CLC but free. They're an Iron Man with the goal of filling in every single collection log slot, but doing it only in free-to-play. There are currently 88 collection log slots available in free-to-play, including the two rare drops from the free-to-play bosses Obor and Bryophyta, and the forever coveted Stale Baguette. This account has an actually achievable end goal, and I'm really excited to start working towards it. Let's begin our journey towards actually finishing the collection log. What better way is there to start an account than by doing the sleepy ghost quest for 9 prayer, poking the dummy in Varrock for 7 attack, and then helping out the most despicable character in the entire game? Oh man, we're about to get our first collection log slot. Let's kiss the frog princess, and we should get a frog token. There we go. First collection log slot knocked out. Shield of Erev is done just for the 600 coins, pretty much. You might ask how I got this done so early. I, I just made an alt account. It was pretty easy. And I had to come down to the stronghold of the security while we were in the area to get our 10,000 gold. And of course course the fancy boots which are going to be our best in slot boots for a while contrary to popular belief they're not actually the best in slot boots for free to play but we'll get into that at a later point uh they do look the best though they are best in slot fashion scape this did take a few hours of miserable grinding but we managed to finish the hardest free to play quest of all time cook's assistant yay crafting xp which is actually very important on a free to play iron man but again We'll get into that later. I'm trying to get the 25 bones I need for Demon Slayer, and it's so hard not to bury these bones. In case you didn't know, burying normal and big bones is the only way to get prayer XP and free to play. Playing RuneScape leaves me with a lot of AFK time, which is perfect for when I want to play Marvel Strike Force. Marvel Strike Force is a mobile squad RPG that lets you assemble a team of your favorite superheroes and supervillains like Wolverine, Deadpool, Venom, and the X-Men. There are over 250 to choose from, which is pretty insane. My personal favorites are Loki and Rocket Raccoon. No, this is not up for debate. New players can unlock up to 17 total characters in just the first 30 days like spider-man deadpool thor captain america and more favorites so this is the best time to get into it as you play you'll get to outfit and upgrade your characters to make them stronger you're going to need to strategize with your team composition to be able to make it through not only the single player modes but also leap other plethora of game modes such as arena blitz massive weekly alliance battles raids and cosmic crucible where you get to go head to head against other players in a tournament the teams you put together really matter and it takes a lot of thought to put together a great one on top of all that the gameplay is fun and engaging and has some awesome cinematics where you can unleash dynamic chain combos with your squad with just a single tap. The graphics are also fantastic and do the characters justice. So scan the QR code on screen or click the link in the description to download Marvel Strike Force for free and immerse yourself in the massive Marvel Universe. Unlock Wolverine for free using this month's limited time promo code, Logan. Plus, for a limited time this month, if you use the QR code or click the link in the pinned comment or description, you can celebrate Pride Month by unlocking Marvel's LGBTQ Heroes Korg and America Chavez for free simply by logging into the game this month. Thank you so much to Marvel Strike Force for sponsoring this video. Just gonna slurp down this potion and get ourselves 325 magic XP. There's level 9 magic. Earth Strike unlocked. This is huge. And there's rune mysteries done. There's actually a method to train rune crafting by infinitely gathering air talismans, but do I look mad enough to train rune crafting in free to play? Definitely not. Not until like episode 6 at least. Vampire Slayer done, and that gets us up to 21 attack, but that's pretty much the free to play waterfall quest. If you're wondering how I did it, uh, basically what you do is walk up here with Count Drainer right in this corner, then walk right here, then walk under him, and sometimes he'll back into that corner. Once he does, walk here, and you can safe spawn him with mage. It's that easy. I saved the chicken man. Please clap. So this is gonna hurt that beautiful cash stack just a little bit. We need to buy ourselves a chronicle for 300 gold. And the teleport cards are 150 each. I think I'm gonna buy like 10 of these. We're gonna make sure to use them semi sparingly here at the start of the game since we are definitely not rich and uh, we're probably gonna be poor for at least a little while. All right, I've been all over the game world searching for this treasure. Let's dig it up. Pirate's treasure completed. What's in the chest? A gold ring and an emerald. You know, that's our best in slot ring. <laughs> also, since we finished that quest, we got to 20 attack. We can now buy a mithril sword. Yes, swords are better than long swords, by the way. They're also cheaper. Uh, it's just because they attack with a four tick attack cycle instead of the five tick of the long swords. Although, I think in a future update, they're changing that. So, maybe in the future it won't be as good. But for now, we are an absolute chad. One of the newer free-to-play quests right here. X marks the spot super good early on. I probably should have done this like right away. Because you get an antique lamp, you could put it to anything. I think it's probably best to put it into prayer. Actually, 
crafting is probably better. Early game crafting is a really huge pain in the butt, and uh, I'm pretty sure prayer will not be as big of a problem for us. So I'm going to put that into crafting. There's level 5. Hey, we just hit 100 total level, the first of many massive total level accomplishments. Politics quest completed. All right, we need a red berry pie for the knight's sword quest. Can we get lucky and cook it first try? Yes, we can. And there's 19 cooking, by the way. I just spent a bunch of time doing fishing and cooking at shrimps which is always fun. What was once a silly Halloween event is now a quest that gives us free-to-play noobs 600 crafting XP. Look at that, level 10 crafting just from quests. If Lady Luck is on our side, I do believe we're about to nab some more collection log slots. Yes, we got the leader hose in top, which also happens to look incredible. I mean, seriously. You guys have probably never seen this before, but if you do the Knight's Sword, you get all the way up to 29 smithing. I bet none of you guys knew about that. So we're just about ready to start training some combat and going for some collection log slots, but there's something very important that we need to do first, and that is the Imp Catcher quest. I know you're looking at me weird. Stop it, okay? Because finishing that quest gives you the Amulet of Accuracy, which boasts an amazing plus four accuracy for each attack style, which sounds like the most pathetic upgrade of all time, but keep in mind that Mithril Sword we have right now is plus 16 accuracy, meaning we're going to get a 20% accuracy boost just for finishing this quest so i think it's worth it so the reason we do this here is there are a ton of imp spawns around the volcano like eight of them i think and check this out because of the ash update they actually drop fiendish ashes which are 10 prayer xp each so you might actually get a couple prayer levels here going for amulet of accuracy oh my god it's over finally it's been almost an hour of killing imps let me look how many did i, ki I killed 131 imps for this white bead look at all the duplicate beads i got this is the most ridiculous grind but hey we've got all the beads we need let's head back to draenor and get our amulet of accuracy i love when quests do this this is a surprising turn of events i just so happen to have all of those beads on me there we go almost a thousand magic xp as well and the almighty amulet of accuracy 14 magic so is that high enough yeah we can use fire strike now which is going to be our best spell basically for a long time because i have no chaos runes or money amulet of accuracy we're looking like such a baller right now and look at that our first beginner casket has been achieved this is the one from the x marks the spot quest and we actually don't have all the stat requirements for every step or the items for the stash units i don't even know if you can build stash units and free to play for the beginner clues anyways let's not waste any time first First beginner clue actually pretty decent we got a staff of air and a staff of water the staff of air is pretty useful uh staff of water i'm probably just gonna sell to the shop uh actually maybe i'll even sell the staff of air but uh yeah money so these cow fields are gonna be my home for the next little bit i need a lot of cow hide to turn into leather so that i can train my crafting up we're gonna need higher crafting levels for making best in slot jewelry and for doing beginner clues and i think cows can actually drop beginner clues so maybe we'll be able to knock out a couple of those from here uh, i probably won't stay here too long because I want to move on to the stronghold of security and get some unique drops for the collection log from there but we should be able to rack up maybe like 100 cowhide or so. A hard day's work has paid off 163 leathers made that's 163 cows that I've slain and I got one beginner clue from it which we're going to finish up after we get some crafting gains. Oh, the grind is finally paying off you guys 18 crafting that means we can craft the most prestigious of leather gear the, the pants. Well, there's the end of the cowhide saga. We've got 21 crafting well on our way to, I think we need like 50 for the strength amulet. Okay, I know I keep getting distracted. I want to go to the stronghold of security, get some collection log slots, and do some more combat, but we need food. All right, all I have is wines, and that's going to lower my attack level, so I want to get our fishing up to 20 so that every trip we do at the stronghold, we can just fly fish outside, fish some food, cook it up on the fire that's next to it, and head right back down. Yay, 20 fishing, let's go kill things. The first victim of our powerful mithril sword will be these minotaurs here. These are actually pretty good to train on. They have low defense and, of course, some decent drops. They drop some arrows, which I'll use to train ranged up later. And they drop one of the pieces of the scepter. And I'm going to need a ton of dupes of that so that we can constantly teleport back here to the stronghold of security later on. We got our first beginner clue from minotaurs. They drop these at a rate of 1 in 60, so they're fairly common, especially because these only have 10 health, so I can kill them relatively quickly. Although I kind of don't want to leave for every beginner until we get our full skull scepter it's going to be really annoying to get back here uh the, my best way is to teleport with the chronicle and then walk all the way over here which takes like five minutes but at the same time i'm probably going to need to do hundreds and hundreds of beginner clues to fill up the entire log so maybe i should and the second dry streak of our account is over we finally have the right skull half at 96 kill count i think the drop rate on this is like one in 
34 or something. So we basically went triple the drop rate for this. Don't know how over the drop rate we were on the imps. But honestly, if we go dry and everything, it's okay. Most of these grinds aren't too bad. I just pray I do not go dry on the Opor Club or I'll lose my mind. We just got the beginner clue step that requires a gold ring and gold necklace. Thankfully, I kept the gold ring from the pirate's treasure quest and the gold bar because I can use it to make a gold necklace. After that, I'm going to have to get, what is it, 40 mining and 40 smithing if I want to make anything gold in the future. Another nice thing is that they drop these bronze full helms at a drop rate of 1 in 5, and the shop here buys them for just about 20 coins. It goes down by like 1 GP every time you oversell, but still, it's pretty nice money. Hey, we just got 30 attack, which means we can head back over to Varrock and buy the Adamant Sword upgrade, which is huge. And look, we've made 2,500 gold from these Minotaurs so far. I think that might actually be enough to afford the sword, so perfect. Yep, it was 2,000 coins, so we actually afforded that straight through that. What's the upgrade? We get plus 7 melee strength and plus 7 accuracy. That is actually huge. And the next upgrade's at 40 and a beekeeper. Please, please don't give me flax. Wait, is flax even free to play? What happens if you don't get the outfit? All right, just give me an outfit piece. I don't want to know what happens when you don't get the outfit. Yes, the beekeeper's hat and our new best in slot fashion scape. So I think it's about time to stop killing minotaurs. We've killed a lot of them and gathered up some decent drops. We got 6,500 gold, 62 tin or 32 copper, 160 renaissance, and almost 1,700 iron arrows plus 69 bronze arrows. And uh, we'll be able to use those later on to train our range. But right now I want to keep up with the melee training. Our stats are looking amazing. So let's move on to hill giants. They have a 1 in 128 chance to drop the giant key, which I'm going to need a lot of if I want to get the hill giants club from Obor. And they just have generally okay drops and they drop big bones, which will help me get my prayer up. I really want to unlock protect from melee. That would be amazing. I also got nine beginner clue scrolls finished while we were at it. So I think I'm just going to open these in the near future. I want to save up like a hundred of them and do an absolutely huge opening. But since we're in the early stages of the account, I actually need whatever items I might get inside of this. You can get some decent stuff. Let's we'll see if I can show you. Well, steel plate skirt, that's a gear upgrade. You know, that's just a gear upgrade. Steel battle axe, not really useful. Steel full helm, what is going on? Uh, water staff, that's money. Okay, here's a little bit of a terrible clue. Come on, <laughs> something interesting. Two steel plate bodies, that's good. I can sell those and technically a gear upgrade. Uh, three more to go. Five nature runes, that's what I'm talking about. The runes will be invaluable. Chaos runes and herrings and leather van braces. No uniques yet in our first 10 beginners, but that's okay. We got a little bit of money and some better defensive gear. Oh, also I forgot to show this. We got 19 right skull halves in that minotaur grind there. This will be a lot of charges for the scepter once we get it. So it's time to get a little gear upgrades. I just tried to kill the hill giants and I was getting my butt whooped. So the first thing we're going to buy is a mithril chain body. As you can see, it's not only about 3,000 gold cheaper than the mithril plate body, but it actually has better crush defense. Chain bodies have better crush defense than plate bodies, and almost everything I'm going to be fighting in free-to-play actually uses crush. So chain bodies are better in free-to-play than plate bodies, which are commonly used in pay-to-play. So just a little interesting tidbit. Next, we're going to buy an adamant full helm, which is just over 3,500 gold. I had to hop like 10 worlds to find one that some other Iron Man hadn't sold stuff to. That's a huge gear upgrade. I don't have 30 defense, but it will be a huge gear upgrade. Okay, wait, wait. Now it's a big gear upgrade. There we go. Look at that that full helm, it's green. And the last gear upgrade we'll be getting for quite a while, these Addy Plate Legs, 6200 GP, also overstocked. Can you Iron Man stop selling things to the stores? You do get more money for selling items to a specialized store, like selling to Louis Armored Legs Bazaar will get you more money for your Addy Plate Legs than if you sell them at the general store, so it's a good idea. But I just need one world where they have it so I can buy these. So there goes most of our cash stack, but we are looking pretty baller. I can't sell him back the skirt. I don't know who sells skirts, but anyways, look at us. We look amazing. Oh yes, we got a quiz random. Let's put this book right onto prayer. There's 330 prayer XP and 23 prayer. Yeah, I hope we get genies and quiz masters a lot because prayer training takes a long time. Oh hey, I didn't know that you could get beginner clue scrolls from skilling uh, in free to play. Wow, also 30 fishing. Random events are our friends. We just got five rubies from a random event. I was hoping to get uncut gems for the crafting XP, but that's something. Any second now, we're gonna hit it. Right, come on. Yeah, there we go. 40 strength. We didn't get the pop up message because it was tick perfect with us getting hit, but yeah. Pretty cool. We're going to switch over to Stab now, although I think I'm going to take a break from training combat. I wanted to stay here till we got a Giant's Key, but we're almost 200 Hill Giants in without it. Not too dry, but a little unfortunate that we've gone dry on pretty much everything on this account so far. No big deal, though. I want to go make some money because I'd actually like to start training ranged and magic. It would be nice to be able to safe spot these. It'd make it a little bit more AFK for me, and honestly, magic and range, they're kind of just 
better in free to play. So my method for making money is going to be here in the mines southeast of Varrock. I'll mine the silver ore whenever they respawn and while waiting for that I'll also mine the iron. We're going to make the iron bars into plate bodies which sell to Horvik for over 300 gold each. As for the silver we're going to make those into unstrung emblems which sell for 120 each at the wilderness general store plus give us 50 crafting XP each which is going to be very important in the future. Is this going to be another collection log slot? Oh yes the camo top. Nobody will be able to find me now. Found a shooting star while I was mining here, and you can get stardust in free to play. I, I assume I can't get anything besides the gem packs. Oh, past Shelby, you innocent, innocent child. No, you actually can't even access the stardust shop in free to play, so all those stardust I'm mining, that's for nothing. Well, now we are in Edgeville, and it is time to smith all of this ore. I've got about a thousand silver ore and just over 600 iron ore. I'm going to be smelting all that. Equip everything that I've got because all that just weighs me down, and it's going to make my run deplete faster, which it, it already has no troubles depleting on its own here's the last level we are going to get from these silver bars 44 crafting pretty successful grind if i say so i didn't expect us to get this far i kind of want to just go straight to 50 and make ourselves a, an amulet of strength although we do need to level up our magic quite a bit now the beautiful thing about these unstrung symbols is that their high elk value is 120 which means if we sell all of these to a shop i should have over a hundred thousand gold assuming that i hop worlds in between selling them because if i sell them all at once the sell price is going to be like 20 gold but yeah look at that a thousand sixteen unstrung emblems and there's the iron bars done as well. We got 340 of them out of like the 600 something that we got. It's pretty standard. We'll smith all these into iron plate bodies and sell those as well. We should have a pretty fair amount of money. More than I expected. So I'm going to be doing something a little bit risky. The normal general stores were only buying these for like 80 gold each. And then the price goes down like dramatically instantly. So I'm going to head to the bandit camp in the wilderness. This store here I'm pretty sure buys for high elk value. So it won't go down as much. And it'll pay more for it. I'm going to bring half these symbols at a time. Hopefully we don't get PK'd. I'm going to have my main up there just in case I need it to tank the bandits. We only have 34 HP. Actually, let me bring some food. That's probably a good idea. Okay, we made it here. There are really only a couple bandits. Oh, there's one right here. Ah, uh, close the door. All right, we're in. We made it here. Let's trade the dude. And yes, they buy for high elk value. If I sell 10, it looks like I get 540. So I'm going to be getting an average of... Wait, what? On, only sold five. I'm sorry. <laughs> so that means these are selling for an average of 108 GP each, which is perfect. I really just wanted it to be above 100. GP. So now all I have to do is hop worlds a hundred times and sell to this shop. Should be easy. What? I, I'm going to have to still frame that, but there was a level 105 out here in like what looked like steel armor just standing in the spot here in the cooking spot. Uh... I don't know if I should be worried. Ah, uh, there was a dude here. I don't know if he's also selling stuff to the shop or not, but I'm going to start, like, trying to get through these worlds even faster just so I hope he doesn't find my world again. All right, first 500 have been sold. We made it back to the Ferox Enclave. By the way, I can't believe this pool works in free-to-play. That's really good, actually. And you can minigame teleport here with Clan Wars. Super useful. 54,000 gold nearly. That cash tech is a lot better than it was before. Let's get the other 506 out. Let's go sell these. We all knew it was inevitable. It was going to happen eventually. But the final boss of free to play showed up in best in slot gear. There it is. TB snare kill found me selling stuff here at the bandit shop. And with that incredible gear, he had a maple shortbow switch as well, by the way. I just stood no chance. Even with my half inventory of food, I couldn't even make it halfway across the bandit camp before he took me out and claimed my like 50,000 gold worth of stuff. I hope you're happy, okay? Well, that's unfortunate, but I guess that's what happens. I don't even know. Was that a real player? you guys a bot maybe didn't even try to type man i gotta give him ggs though he did kill me fair and square he got my 50k that i had oh that took me so long to mine and smith but at least I, that's why i did half at a time by the way if i had done all of them and lost everything that would have been the worst thing in the world so hopefully this is enough money for us to start leveling up our magic and i'm gonna go to the most overpowered spawn in free to play now let's take a minute to talk about ogresses these monsters have the most overpowered drop table in free to play by a long shot it's not even close first up on the gp front they have a common 500 to 1000 gold drop and three alkable drops the rune med helm the rune full helm and the rune battle axe this means on average each ogress kill gets you about 800 gp on top of that they drop every single important rune you could need in free to play like nature runes law runes death runes chaos and more they 
They commonly drop arrows and uncut gems too, just in case you thought that wasn't enough. To top it all off, we need to get their unique collection log item, the Ogre's Mask, that sits at a nice 1 in 1,200 drop rate. This is going to take a while to get, but honestly, killing Ogres is one of the best things I can do for the account in general, so it's basically passive. Well, first things first, we are going to gather what is basically our best in slot magic setup. I'm looking at the best in slot magic stuff right now, and I can get all of it, I think, so we can actually go ahead and gather that right now. First things first, we're going to head to the Wizard's Tower and kill Wizards for a Blue Wizard Robe Top. All right, the Blue Wizard Robe Top. It took us 34 kills to get the 1 in 18. That's okay. I think, have we gone dry on every item so far since we started? That's pretty good. That means when we go for other things, we'll get super spoon-fed on those. That's how it works, right? The easiest, best in slot to get. Staff of Fire, boom. Now we need an Amulet of Magic, which requires 40 smithing, and we have the rest of the other stats. So we just need two smithing levels. I think we should be able to pull that off with the, uh, how many do we have? Again, we've got like 340 iron bars. I'm pretty sure we got this. And 40 smithing. We can now smelt gold ores. That's great. Since we also got 40 crafting from our grind, we should have access to the crafting guild with a brown apron. How you get a brown apron? I really don't know. But first, let's sell these 68 iron plate bodies. We should get a decent little bit of money from them, right? How much do they sell for each here? They sell for 336. And if I sell five per world, it goes down to like 280. Yeah, so they're like 300 gold each. That's not bad. And we got ourselves 21k from that. Not bad. Time to enter the crafting guild for the first time. By the way, you get the brown apron from Thessalia and Verak. Oh, welcome to the guild of master craftsmen. What a fine compliment from you, sir. Thank you. They have a lot of gold rocks in here. There's a lot of silver rocks in here, too. Here we go. We got our gold bars. Let's make the Sapphire Amulet Unstrung. Let's string it. I forgot Cosmic Runes. Time for a quick enchantment. And there's the Amulet of Magic. Plus 10 Magic Bonus. God, we look so good. Best in slot gloves for Mage are pretty hard to acquire in free-to-play, actually. They are the leather gloves, and I really don't know how we're going to get our hands on that. And the last best in slot we need, besides our shield, which doesn't give us any mage offensive bonuses, so I'm not going to bother going for that right now, is the Zamorak Robe Bottoms drop by the Monks of Zamorak. It's a 1 in 20 chance to get it. These things are pretty easy. I think they've only got like 10 HP, so I should be able to smash these out pretty quickly, and uh, hopefully we don't go dry on these too. All right, second kill. That's what I'm talking about. Our luck is turning around on this account. Let's throw these bad boys on, and look at this gear setup. Throw on the Staff of Fire, plus 27 magic bonus. And we just look so good. I mean, dang. Corsair Curse is done. And we now have access to the Ogres' easy game. First Ogres kill. Look at that. 13 nature runes and some big bones. That is amazing. I got to make sure to attack the warriors because the... Uh, the shamans have pretty good mage defense and, you know, they, they use spells so they could hurt me in here and that's, oof, that's scary. Also, these guys drop big bones so we get 15 prayer XP for every kill. Maybe we'll, like, actually have protection prayers one day. Oh my god, it happened. We got a rune full helm. Thank you very much, Ogresses. That's like the first of 10,000 we're going to get if I actually AFK here forever. But yeah, that's like 20k. We can buy more runes. All right, I used like all 1,000 casts. We killed 15 Ogresses. Nothing else too exciting, just some random runes. And uh, of course, that one rune full helm, it's not in my inventory. Not because I died. That would be silly if I went so AFK that I died. <laughs> like, pretty embarrassing. That wouldn't happen to me, though. But anyways, I'm going to go buy more runes. I'm basically going to spend all the money we have on runes, because why not? I spent our entire cash stack on fire strike runes. Yes, I accidentally bought the same amount of mind runes and air runes. Don't judge me. You're supposed to buy double the air runes than the mind runes. I'm not feeling it today. I'm not all here. But anyways, we're going to cast all of these and see how much GP we can get. But I think I'm going to save that for the next video. I'm just going to spend so much time AFKing Ogresses because we need cash to level up our stats. We need the drops from Ogresses to progress ourselves as well. And uh, probably pretty soon we'll be going for some new collection log slots in different areas. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series. If you did, you know how to support it. You press those stupid little buttons below the video that makes it do better for some reason. My entire life depends on you guys pressing those buttons. So please, God press them. Anyways, thank you. I appreciate you all. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.